Jeez, you get you could you could wait till you actually make sure I'm actually on before you live stream. <laughs> Jesus no, today, Christ. No, no, no. See, folks, what I was trying to do is give oh Jeff the welcome, you know, surprise of Sunday. So, hello, everyone. This is this culture guy, and this is Jeff, uh, true knowledge himself. Uh, uh, as always, complaining and you know. Uh, That's all doing, I do, folks. I just bitch and gripe about everything. <laughs> yes. And today we have a spectacular live stream review this Sunday uh, to honor the 10th anniversary of Captain America, the Winter Soldier, which is crazy. That's 10 years. Uh, but no worry. There's a lot of 10 years uh, this year. But you got to give me a minute on those. You got to give me a minute on those, on that, tra on those trailers and everything and whatnot. I don't mm -hmm. have it ready. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, no. Yeah, that's fine. We have a lot to talk about today. Well, so what we have here, folks, as always, I always put in the description. We have, you know, we have some... change the screen back to where we're at, we're normal size. There you go. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. Anyway, uh, anyway, so we got good geeky news we can talk about, which is Bio Juice, uh, Bio Juice or Bio Juice 2. We have to talk about that. Uh, it's been, oh my God, a week since the trailer dropped, which was awesome, which we'll discuss uh, whenever we get ready for the trailer to show you guys. Um, as always, me, Jeff, made the very professional thing of converting it into, you know, uh, MP3 so that you guys can have really great sound quality. MP4. MP4, thank you. I, I knew it was a four or three or something like that. Thank you. Um, you know, to hear the you now the sound good, you know, instead of you know, having this bizarre sound from my end. because uh, you know, uh, stream art is weird when we have to share trailers and or, or other other things. It is really bizarre. So thank goodness Jeff talked about that last uh, two weeks ago. Uh, we were I I had to keep myself reminded to uh, tell Jeff to convert these trailers, but anyway, and, and we also gonna have a Captain America with the Soldier trailer, you know, for break. Uh, whenever we get into that review, um, but yeah, uh, Jeff, how you doing, buddy? How's life? I'm uh, doing how's... okay, sir. I'm doing alright. No, oh, good, good. I like your hat. I'm still jealous of that. Oh, you got your hat's just like mine. That's yeah, true. I mean, I'd say before I'm the blue team and you're the gold team, so we're yeah. representing the X Men team very well. Exactly. Uh, exactly. And oh my god, I'm so excited for tomorrow. Uh for the X Men ninety seven uh what's it episode three review? I watched episode three like four times. Really? Oh I, yeah, yeah. X Men's really easy to watch. Oh yeah, they are. I, I'm trying to remember they're like thirty minutes, right? Uh these episodes. Or? Yeah, like 30, 35 minutes. Yeah, something like that. Um yeah. So uh, let me do this, uh, a quick recap of, of our, our, our next content for the MCU Bleed Edge. Uh, you know, a little plug for them uh, here. Uh, here, I got their link here. Uh, it's been a while. Here you go. See down there. See their links. Check them out. Check out MCU Bleed Edge. Please help us uh, hit our mark for 2024. Check out our live stream reviews and our content over there. What do you mean there them? I was about to say, what do you mean them? You're a part of the team. Well, hey, I, I just want to be generous. Dude, you guys are like family. Uh, I know that we are. Like that. <laughs> so, um, yes, our our contact there we do here. You know, tomorrow Monday report we got an awesome, uh, you know, uh, first segment of the X Men ninety seven review of episode three. I'm so excited with that. Talk to that with Jeff. You had a big week. Yeah, big week. Um, and then after the X Men ninety seven review, uh, me and Jeff are going to finish up um, the Walking Dead, the ones who live, yep. because we. We did talk about the finale, but we wanted to talk more about it because we uh, have a lot of opinions about the finale. But we didn't really have enough time to really to really talk about the finale fully and to talk about the the season as as, as a whole. Um, yeah, and uh, now we got the budget too. Yeah, and and yeah, we got the confirmed budget, which was nice because uh, as we we were discussing behind the scenes, we didn't get confirmed budgets for either the. They're based on Red City, no. Yeah, yeah. It, it was so bizarre. I was like, because these shows always confirm the budgets, and I, it was weird, but okay. So we got the budget, which was good. Um, So I'm really excited to talk about it. I think it was like what. $55 million or $63 million or something like that. What did I tell you it was? Uh, 85 I think it was. What, no, um, 85 Yeah, I, hold on. No. 
Hold on. I or 83 or something like that. Oh. Hold on. Let me check. Let me check. Now, now you're I'm doubting myself now. How much is the budget? 82. Um 82? It was 82? 82.75 billion. And per episode was like 13. 13. That's right. That's what that's what I told you. 13 million. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's not bad. That's yeah, still offering secret evasion. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear, secret like evasion. I mean, what was the but well I I know Secret Invasion was low, but like the reshoots were very Secret good. Invasion was over 200 million. Yeah. Remember that yeah. was like 20 or something like that? Yeah, 20 or something like that. Uh, but it, it didn't show. I mean, it was very cheap looking and, and like it, it just. Oh, the finale, the, the digital effects in the finale were terrible. Oh my God. The Drax arm on. Uh, oh. it was just so Gaia. bad. On Gaia's Gaia, character. Yeah. Yeah, Gaia, it was so bad. Ugh. I, I I I just can't believe we saw that in the finale. I could have done without Gaia. I I could have done the, the deaths of Talo or Marie Hill, uh, which I mean I, I didn't want those characters to die and, and guess what? They, no, I didn't want Maria Hill to die either. Maria Hill is really good in in uh in Winter Soldier. I know. You forget, you almost forget until you watch it. I hadn't seen it in years. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, same here. Um, I mean, she's great. I mean, Nick Fury, like, he's like my favorite. Like, he's such a great character, and I just feel like after this movie, uh, The Winter Soldier, he, he just became such a superfluous character afterwards. Like, Age of Ultron, he's like kind of there, and then this was this is one of his, his last strong performances as like the regular Nick Fury, the ones that have balls. Yeah, exactly. Before they, before they neutered his character and shit, made him into a little bitch. Yeah. He was a gangster yeah. in Winter Soldier. Oh, yeah. Uh, that I mean, chase scene with him in the, in, the, in, the, in the SUV was one of the best chase scenes ever. Yeah. One of the best ones. Uh, oh, my God. That was so... Yeah. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of great things about Winter Soldier. That's so, a really good scene. Yeah. I, I, got, I, got the, 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 I got that trailer. It's, it's, it's loaded up. I got to get an ashtray. Yeah, go ahead. Let me yeah, let, let me, me grab an ashtray and now we'll watch the trailer when I get back. Okay, let me like talk to people about beer juice and go after that. Um, anyway, uh, so as Jeff said before, we got the beer juice trailer uh, uh, up and ready, which is great. Um, if anyone knows what's going on, is September 9th of 2024 is the sequel to beer juice. My bad, folks. Sneaky. So, Video Juice 2 is coming out this year, September 9th of 2024. Uh, it's starring again Michael Keaton, uh, Ronaldo Ryder, Catherine O'Hara, and then the new cast we got is uh, William Defoe, uh, Monica Bellucci, uh, Jenna Ortega, uh, and Justin Verro, um, who's from The Leftovers. Uh, so, we got a great sequel with the attorney and a new cast. And one of the things, uh, I you know, it's been 35 years since the first film back in 1988, and now we got our first trailer, and I'm very excited to show you guys View Just Two. I mean, I'm a huge fan of this film. I mean, if you're a fan of Michael Keaton's filmography, this is like his big hit before the 89th film, Batman. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's uh, so um. In fact, Jeff, you're back here. Um, let me ask you the question before we show the trailer. Uh, are you a big fan of Beauty Juice, the first film? And are you, I wouldn't like, say I'm a big fan, but I watched it several times when I was a kid and thought it was really good when, good when I was a kid. I haven't watched it since I was a kid. Mm. Yeah. Whenever you um, tell me to like do the movie like schedule, I definitely wanted to put Beauty Juice in our like uh, our time slot for movie review. Okay. Because we need to be watch that before the sequel comes out in September. Because it's a great film, I, I really enjoy it. It still holds you up. Do it over here on your channel after we get done with Chucky. Yeah, that's true. We can do that too as well. Because um, I, I mean, honestly, I've got us. I've got us to do that whole like, um, like uh, the where I'm, where I'm gonna have to where I'm gonna have to fit you in for a movie pick next time is gonna be between um when we do the Matrix films. In between the Matrix and the Lord of the Rings, 
Um, hmm. You could. Have, I'll, I'll give you a pick in between there. Before we do the Fellowship of the Ring, you'll have a, a movie pick. So, and that'll be like a couple months from now. Okay. Right. Okay. So we're better off doing Beetlejuice over here. Okay. All right. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, that makes sense. Which is good. So I'm fine with that. And uh, we got a lot of great things coming up for uh, our movie views. Uh, as Jeff said, Lord of the Rings, Matrix, which is crazy. All right. Let's do this. Uh, let me uh, cancel my echo here right now um, for Jeff. Uh, bust my uh, chops. Okay. I, I could cuss like you remember. Good job. job. Yeah, yeah. I see, I, I have my notes here. It says, like, Andreas, remember this. Convert trailers. Cancel your echo clip. Oh, you actually made notes too? too? Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Play the video. Yeah, let's do this. Um, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this trailer. Let's do this. Um, let me do this. is loose. That's it? That's it. Very quick trailer. Jesus um, Christ. Yes. Well, hey, I don't mind. Like, first off. Turn the cancellation back on. Oh, yes. Yes, as our good friend Jeff has brought up, the trailer is short, but this is a future trailer. We're going to get another trailer soon, uh, in either August or July. When I maybe even though the writer look young. Yeah, I. She looks just like the same. She aged well over what thirty five years. I saw her on that Netflix show, whatever was that, everything, and she didn't look that young. Yeah, Stranger Things. I think you're talking about. Yeah. Well, I mean. <sighs> I, I mean, that's her. This is this is her, her character look, which I can't believe that they pulled it off. I mean, she looks great in this uh, trailer. Um, yeah. So, Jeff, what's your opinion overall on the teaser trailer? I know I, just, I don't really have much of an opinion. There's nothing there. All it is is just like a, the one appearance of like of the two characters. Like you know, what I'm saying like you know, like I don't know. Like well, uh, other than that, I mean. I'll watch the movie when it comes out, like on TV. I'll watch it. I'm not going to the theater to watch it. Wow, wow, folks! Are you a Tim Burton fan? Come on, you no, need to I'm not, to get I'm not a massive Tim Burton fan, no. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, I, I don't blame you. I mean, <laughs> he, he's acquired taste, I would say. Um, anyway, yeah. The, I, I mean, think this is cool. I think it's cool that he was banging that one chick there for a long time and whatnot. I always thought she was a freak. That Magdalena, whatever the fuck her name is. Um, yeah, uh, the one from um, the one from Fight Club. Uh, Helen Bell, uh, Helen Bonner Carter. Helen Bonner Carter, yeah, she, she's a freak. Yeah, she's a great actress, and whatever you say, Jeff, she's amazing, fantastic actress. So anyway, doesn't matter that. Um, yeah, so this to wrap up the trailer uh, reaction, uh, I really enjoy it. I mean, first off, if you're not, if you first off, I really appreciate they know we love Beauty Juice. The fact that you used the the old banana song from harry um the, the artist i forgot his name harry bouncer that's was really cool to use that as the teaser trailer for the music and it was really great if you don't know what i'm talking about the song the song is where in the original uh gian davis and alec bowen i say possess um Renata Re Re davis back uh no, they, they confirmed they're not coming back. Oh man, that, that would have been awesome. I know it could have been awesome to vote for them. Um, but I, I, I mean, I couldn't get why for Alec Mullen because of the situation he's in. 
but whatever. Um, yeah, so, you know, from the Richard movie, um, they put the song when they were processing a uh, writer's family, and it was such a funny scene. And the fact they used that song again to, like, make the mood of this teaser trailer is really great. So I really dug this teaser trailer. Um, and, I mean, Michael Keaton, he, he's such a great actor. I love him. You know, the fact that last year he came back as Batman, and now this year he's coming back as Beauty Juice is, like, a big deal. So, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm very excited for this. I mean, the fact that they got Jan Ortega here, um, I think this movie will do well. I mean, let's see, you know. I mean, the word of mouth has to be good to make this you know, work. But, yeah, so far this year has been very good for the box office films. I mean, you know, so I, 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 I think this movie will do well, you know. Um, anyway, uh, any last thoughts, sir, before we go into Captain America The Winter Soldier? Oh, no, sir. I'm good, for, I'm good on Captain America Winter Soldier. All right, let's do this. All right, so let's do this. Um, first off, this is the ninth film of Phase 2 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's directed by the Russo Brothers. Um, it's written by the Christopher... Uh, what is it? Uh, I got my notes here. Russo uh, Brothers. Yeah, I, I mentioned... Uh, written, by Mar written by Marcus and McFeely. Yeah, Marcus McFeely. And, of course, it stars Chris Evans, Scarlett Johansson, Anthony Mackie, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, Robert Redford, uh, and of course Sebastian Stan, and of course a uh, huge cast here. And Jeff, when you first saw this movie back in April 2014, what your what was your expectation for this Winter Soldier? I didn't see it in, in April 2014. Remember, because I got hurt. Oh yes, no, no, my bad. Yeah, I, I, I can't yeah. remember when I saw it, but I saw it um, uh, like on TV. Remember, my first movie in theaters was um, Infinity, Infinity War. War. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, 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 my first MCU movie in theaters. So I thought it was lot outstanding. Like, I mean, from what I remember, like the first time I watched it, but I couldn't tell you when it was. Like, mm -hmm. I could, I can't give you a date. Like, you know what I'm saying, whatnot. But I mean, we reviewed it on the Bleeding Edge, right? And like, um, and like on the review, like I I raved about it. I think I gave it a ten out of ten. I think it's one of the best MCU films ever, if not the the the, the best MCU film. It's definitely like in the top three for me. Like in my rotating top, you know, top three of like that could be number one, sort of, since I'm not good at picking number ones, you know. Um, like Endgame, Infinity War, Winter Soldier is like how it lines up for me in my head, right? And then it's all kind of wide open after that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, like it becomes more wide open. But those three are like my locked in definite top three MCU films, like top tier, you know, the most high caliber, like, you know what I'm saying? And Winter Soldier is probably, like, honestly, the best movie it is. Like, overall, like, the best overall movie. Like, overall movie. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, all the different elements it has going on and whatnot and everything, right? All the different, like, you know, like, layers it adds. Um, it, it might be a better movie than Endgame or Infinity War. It might be. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I fairly enjoy this one. I mean... I mean, this is the movie that got yeah, me. He did. Like, does a really good job as the villain of the of the mm. film. Yes, he does, uh, which we'll get into. I mean, definitely The Wizard Soldier was a, a he great get, He doesn't get his proper due, I don't think. No. I, I Well, it, it's very interesting. I, I think it's because, like... I wasn't connected to the, to the YouTube and all that back then, so I don't know what people said back then. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what, what the thoughts were about that, his performance, right? But, like, it, honestly, I, th I feel like it's one of the things that, and we'll talk about it later, but, like, you know, I don't mean to cut you off, but that, and, like, we talked, we, we've talked before, uh, Sam and uh, and Black Widow, right? People people don't give them the credit that they deserve and whatnot, because without them, they, there's no film. No. No, I mean, all across around, this is the best MCU film. Um, it's not my personal favorite in, in terms of MCU, but it's top like top tier for me in my top ranking of the MCU films. Uh, this and Civil War. I, I like I actually like more Civil War than this movie, but for different reasons, of course. Uh, I mean of course it has Iron Man. It has a big ambition of critical themes, just like the Winston Soldier does. Um it, it's just overall a very ambitious different film. Yeah, and but one thing I love about the Winston Soldier, it's just a great film. It, it's a great action, critical film. It, it gets to the heart of who Captain America is. Like, this is what, like, Men of Steel should, should have been. Like, 
this is what you can do as a dark Captain America movie, but not making the character darker, you know? Like, Captain America is still the same character we saw from the first two films we saw him of him in Phase 1, you know, the first Avenger and the Avengers. And uh, this movie made me really like Captain America, because at the time, I just wasn't a fan of the character, you know? And this movie made me really like Chris Evans' version of Captain America, and I really love this character now. You know, because this movie just show you how, really, like, how strong he is, how, you know, very, you know, passionate about his beliefs. You know, he will do the sacrifice, you know, to save others, you know. This movie comes off the Avengers. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, out the Avengers, you know, it, it, it well, it also, like, I say, like, move forward the plots we saw in the Avengers and then set up these twists that we, you know, we're going to get into, like, Ant really. Ultron. Yeah, in Ant Ultron. So this movie was very important for the MCU and, and, and successfully done that. Very That's well. a big story. Yeah. yeah, so um, so let's let's get into uh, you know, the beginning of the film. So first, when we first saw Captain America, we see him running around the Washington, you know, monument. Uh, and this is where we get introduced to Sam Wilson, uh, the first time, which is great, played by Anthony Mackie, and great way to start the movie. Very funny when he say on your left, and then poor Sam, he just had to, you know. Had to take the blood it's like come on dude not like and then and then, it, and then we get this really cool character uh development with, between sam and uh captain america about oh uh, you know what you know um what do you, what do you call it like what kind of tour you went to as a soldier what like what, what you know branch you were in like all that is really great and a great way to learn about sam wilson's the character uh and by the way sam wilson great character he's the best part about this movie too and I'm so happy he has become Captain America. Um, so what do you think about that part? You know, I, I didn't move forward, but what do you think about that uh, introduction of Sam Wilson here? I think that uh, uh, Anthony Mackie and Chris Evans have great chemistry uh, on the screen. Um, yeah. It's really great casting by Sarah Haley Finn, um, casting Anthony Mackie. You know what I'm saying? Um, really great casting for that character. Um, he's an integral part of the Avengers, right? By he he's, he becomes mm -hmm. a part of the Avengers um, yeah. after, after Age of Ultron. The next the next the next round of Avengers that comes out, he's a part of that. You know that Avengers team, uh, like an integral part. Yep. Going into Infinity War and get, you know and whatnot and everything, right? He had some really good scenes um, in the the end battle and Endgame. He had some really good moments in the final battle. Yeah, he stood out. You know. Um, they let, they let him shine, like they you know when you think about it they like they really like uh, they really gave him his, his they gave him his proper due, and then they yeah. gave him the field, you know. Um, so it's just great to see the, like you know them in the beginning, you yeah. know how they started off, you know what I'm saying? Well, not before everything else unfolded, right? Yeah, and I mean he gave us the line for the portals to open on your left, which was a great payoff. Here, that's the thing about yeah. this opening. That's huge, yeah. Yeah, so it's really nice to hear that. I, I like when I was rewatching this, I was like, oh I yes. Have I should have wore it. You know I have that t-shirt. I've got the on the left t-shirt. Oh my god, that is so cool. That's I've got nice. it. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Oh my god, that's nice. By the way, I like your shirt right now. The the Menlo shirt. It's really neat. Oh that's right. that. <laughs> like X-Men and Star Wars mixed together. That's cool. Got um, a match, sir. I got a match. Yeah, they got a match. And it, it is match. Which I like. So, no. it, oh, well, no, what are you, you going to say? I'll coordinate my, my, my clothing. Yeah, actually, you good. You you have a good taste of coordinating your my hats and my t shirts and all that stuff and whatnot and all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, I, I mean, it's good. I, I like it. This is actually a good camel. Probably my favorite, I would say. You just like the X Men hat and you like the Mandalorian too. I mean, somewhat. I mean, I like it. Did you see that article or not? That the Mandalorian, the Mando movie is going to come out in 2026? May. Yeah, May 2026. Yeah. Uh, I saw that. Um, I wonder when they're going to do the season four of The Mandalorian. I mean, I want to see more Volga Tom, baby. I mean, Volga is my favorite. I mean, it could be either next year or maybe the year. Volga Tom, sir. Yeah. It has to be like a 2025 or 2027. 
before or after the movie. Now that Pedro's, now that Pedro's Reed Richards, who knows? I mean, that's the thing. We don't know how how the schedule is going to be. Well, we're going to have to fit in on the Monday show uh, soon, probably um, next Monday. Not this Monday, but next Monday, we're going to have to fit in some MCU news and whatnot, everything, because we do know now that Spider Man is going to, that we know when they're going to start production on Spider Man and whatnot, when they're going to start shooting it. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll that now. Yeah. We'll have to talk about that. Uh, but yeah. no. Uh, I let my final thoughts on the initial scene is uh, I like seeing Black Widow roll up in that car. I think yes. it's you know, and I like their banter. Like I like the inter the inter the, the, the banter back and forth between Black Widow and like Cap to go yeah. to into the movie, you know. Like I like their banter back and forth about the like people he should date and all that shit, but not all that. Uh yeah. Scar does a really good job delivering those lines with him. You know what I mean? Like they have good chemistry too together on screen. Yeah, and I think this is the per perfect uh, superhero duo that we have. They, they have they they have a relationship, you know, the, the two of them. You know what I'm saying? What not? You saw it in Endgame, you know, yeah. or and everything and whatnot, right? Like she she went on the on the on the run with him. Yeah, you know? I mean, I mean yeah. yeah, I mean she helped stop Black Panther. Think about it, it was it, it was Sam and 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 uh, Nat and uh, Cap that went on the run. Yeah, right. that's true. Um, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, I mean, they spent months together, or we don't even know how long together, or whatever, whatnot. You know, living in the hotels and shit, and all that. Like, you know, chasing, chasing Hydra or whatever, doing missions and shit, and whatnot. Yeah, Being Avengers. Yeah, it, it, with the timeline with that, it's like two years because two years. Like, yeah, because it, it's been because the Black Widow movie is set after you know Civil War, and like yeah. you know, there's a time gap between. Really? Those. See, they should have made a movie off that time period. That, yeah, I know. that would have been a great movie. We talked about that before on the MCU, Bleeding Edge. Yeah. The Secret yeah. Avengers movie, that would have been really good to do with Nick Fury in it, right? Like running the team. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have, yeah. Have, have, the Black, have Scarlet Witch there too, right? Yeah, and Vision, you know, because we know Vision. Like, have Vision there too. Yeah. Maybe the Secret Avengers, you know what I'm saying? The five of them. Yeah. I mean, so Hawkeye in there too. Yeah, Hawkeye too. I mean, well, I don't know about Hawkeye because of the, the Hawkeye was the Secret Avengers team when they did the Secret Avengers in the comics. Hawkeye was a part of that team. Yeah, but in the oh, hold on here, if you look it up, you'll see he's on the original Captain Secret Avengers team when they did the Secret Avengers in the comics with Cap and Black Widow. Yeah, yeah. Scarlet Witch was on it. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I know the lighting up. I, I'm just saying in the MCU, it, I don't think Hawkeye will join the team because of the house arrest he did. And same thing with Ant Man, because they made a deal. That's true. So, yeah, you know, I, I, I just couldn't see that. Yeah, for the movie, it would have been cool to see Hawkeye. Yeah. I would have liked that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Jeremy yeah. Renner, yeah. he would have been a nice piece to to the yeah. to the squad, but um. Yeah. I would have enjoyed that if they would have done that movie. That would have made a lot of money. Yeah, it could have. I mean, and also it could have set up the idea to like there's other branches of the Avengers besides the main ones. They could like, have done that instead of doing the Black Widow solo film. They could have yeah. done the vehicle for her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but no, like think about it. They could have put her in the forefront. Yeah, that's true. Sort of like Thunderbolts is doing with Elena. It would have been it would have it would have been more effective for her and whatnot and worked out better for her and whatnot in terms of how her movie went out worked out. Yeah. I mean I mean That was bad planning. I mean, well I mean also it was kinda odd, you know, after the character death. I mean that that was gonna be weird no matter what. Um, but anyway, getting back to what the soldier. So we cut back into this helicopter, uh the, the Quintjack. We see, you know, a strike team. That's where we're going to introduce uh, Crossbones, uh, 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 Lumbo, played by Frank Grillo. And this is where, you know, we get you know, the, the Tasha and Steve relationship, like wrestling, which is great. And and this is where, when, when they go to the boat sh uh, ship, where they need to stop terrorists, lead by uh, a great, uh, 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 what is it, fire, uh, this plane, uh, Botrek Leaper. Uh, in the movie, uh, yeah, gorgeous uh, rock back, a mercenary, and a master of French form of kickboxing. Uh, 
uh, finding skills is, is taking over the shield kind of undercover ship where uh, Stick Will is in there. Uh, that's what uh, Stick Will, not a region we know from the you know, first Thor film and then the Avengers and, and Agent of Shield, the show. Uh, he's is also captured with the, the other hostages. And this sequence is where we really get the cool Captain America fights, where we see him full on super soldier level. Like, because we know it's been two years since the first Avengers, and he's been learning how to train himself into different um, fight skills, you know, like judo or, you know, karate or any forms of type of fighting from various, you know, assassins or, or you know, employees from shield which you see here and it's so incredible uh in this blade and i mean first of all he knocks the guy out you know the the, the you know the cliff of the ship which was so like brutal and, and then at the same time here you know um he gets into the fight of the mercenary with the leaper and it's fantastic here and you know this is where we get into the plot here where he finds out in the time is doing something called Nick Fury, which he doesn't know, and that gets gets into in control with Captain uh, with Captain America. He doesn't, you know, really like this because she's endangering the, the the mission. And then, you know, after the mission, you go back into uh the uh, the Trexkillian, the Shield's headquarters in Washington, where he confronts uh you know Nick Fury uh, about you know the compromise of the mission. Of Natasha, you know, and this is where we get really great Nick Fury material of how you know he lost his eye, you know, and he he didn't ask uh, you know Captain America to do this because he didn't want to feel uncomfortable for him to do this certain thing. So he asked you know Natasha to do this this particular mission, and then afterwards they have this really great talk about his grandpa, which was really great and very deep, uh, you know, uh, information about Nick as a person, and then we get into the main plot where. We see these three new uh, generation helicopters with uh, repulsion uh, technology from you know start. What happened with the first Avengers movie he got close, which that was a great way to you know pull that together. And they're using this very high tech security um, surveillance to hit the target before the the inevitable crime happens. So it's basically from my area report, the Tom Cruise movie, my area report. Where they they stop a pre um, eminent crime before it actually happens. That's what basically what Shield is doing uh, with these three helicopters and this like AI like surveillance technology they have. Uh, they're developing. So and, and this is where like Captain America doesn't agree with this. He thinks this is too like force. I mean, it, it, this is fear. It is not freedom for everyone. And so you know he doesn't agree with this program. And so that was really great. And then afterwards, we get into kind of like a very like slow moment for Captain America. We see you know Peggy Carter back again, and this was such a touching scene. Very sad. Um, we see her, you know, still alive. You know, she has grandchildren, and and unfortunately, she has dementia, which was you know really shocking when you know she starts coughing and then she sees Captain America and he's like, "Oh my God, you're alive, Steve!" And it was so. Oh my god, such a killer moment. It was really sad. And then obviously, um, I, I skipped the part where he meets the um the museum for him in the Smithsonian, which was a great scene. That's a really great recap of what happened in the first Avenger. You know, we see the Howard Commandos so like he did for World War Two. You know, there we got a brief recap of Bucky Barnes, you know, his friend, you know, how he yeah, it was the only soldier in that group to, to fall in, down, you know, die. And so so I will stop right there, and and then afterwards we'll we'll, we'll give you guys like a trailer uh, to break into these breaks. So Jeff, what do you think about that section of the bolt action scene with Captain America uh, saving the Hotchesses, and then uh, his conversation with Nick Fury about the helicarriers they're, they're going to do to like stop the the inevitable crime before it happens, and then of course the two scenes I brought up that's going to be our stop point is the the Peggy Carter visit and the the museum visit. Uh, what do you think about this section? What do you think? What do you think about um, what Robert Redford said about why he wanted to be in the film? He said what attracted him to the film was he was interested in being it being different from his usual work, and then mm -hmm. he wanted to experience this new form of filmmaking that's taken over where you have kind of cartoon characters brought to life through high technology. 
I thought that was really interesting. That's why he wanted to do the film. Uh, I have another reason. I actually had this in notes. Um, he he also did this film because his grandchildren were fans of the Marvel films. Uh -huh. that makes sense. And they, and they wanted to see him in one of them. And so the fact that he is actually in one of these films is kind of incredible. Um, it's called I mean, the Walters, uh, talking about her her playing Maria Hill in the film. Mm -hmm. she, she performed some of her own stunts in the film, explaining, I try to do my own stunts whenever I can. You're not allowed to do certain stunts. There are an amazing team of stunt people that do most of the work in the film. But I studied a lot of Taekwondo. Uh, I also did a lot of training just with weapons because I'm not very comfortable around guns. I had to get comfortable mm -hmm. because that's my character thing. I like to get real physical, so I feel empowered when I'm on set. And even though you don't see it on screen, maybe I'm taking people out that you don't see off camera. I thought yeah. that was cool. As far as what I think of the of the scene on the boat, I mean, it's a great action scene. Him running through the fucking like mercenaries is 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 awesome. Him kicking him in the air and shit, whatnot, yeah. is awesome. Oh you know, my god, shield and shit, whatnot, just running through him. How he does this running right through the boat, like it's it's so well shot with the boat, like the circular motion, like end of the boat. You see him like running around, like the bend, you know, like running around the corridors and the sides. They did a great job of shooting that on the boat, you know, yeah. like really well shot. Um, and um, Black Widow is great on the mission. Grillo and his people and whatnot are all good in the mission, right? Like they're all really good, you know. Uh, it's all really well done. It's high end, like high high end action. The Russo brothers really did a great job with that and the fight choreographers. Um, the Batrick fight's really good. Uh, where 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 Caps like knows how to speak French and takes yes. off. His, his helmet and puts the shield down and says, I guess we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> you know, or whatever. You know, like, that's badass, dude. Yeah. But he gives Cap an edge. Yeah, he does. And, and the fact that he pushed him into the door is, like, incredible. Like, he, he has really good questions. Uh, in this I don't show. have anything else. To, I don't have anything to say about the Peggy Carter stuff. It's whatever to me. You know what I'm saying? Really? Not, I just think Emily Van Camp is hot. Uh. Oh, the, the, the niece, Cheryl, the, Cheryl. Eric Carter. Okay. Cheryl Carter. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting, right? I mean, I, it's funny because half of the community. Peggy, just, I don't care about Peggy Carter in this film. It does, she doesn't mean anything to me. Really? Okay. All right. All right. It's, a, I mean, it's, old, it's, it's old hat. You know what I'm saying? Well, not, I get it. She's old and like Cap still loves her and shit, whatnot, and all this shit. That, you know, I get it. Okay. Okay. I mean, I mean, it was kind of expected. I mean, I was kind of like, oh, you know, I mean, they had to confirm either or not she survived or not. So the fact that this really did. So it was good. I mean, it was a very really sad moment that, that she couldn't remember, like, remember the whole kind of that they had. Uh, so that was really sad. Um, the BCM one, I mean, again, that was just like a typical, you know, expedition, you know, recap of, you know, what, what happened between World War II and now. Oh, yeah. They're just tying up loose ends from the from before. Yeah, exactly. Um, great museum. I, I mean that would it looked real. That's something that you can imagine it to be in in real life. Uh, similar to what we're gonna see in the the Falcon and the Winter Soldier show where they had like a, the the the. It ties the, Bucky into the film right off the bat. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, one of the uh, I know I don't know you remember your review of the first Avenger. One of the big complaints was um, it just despite I mean this trilogy of the Captain America films does a really good job of. Of explaining the importance of friendship between Cap and Bucky, but in the first film, he just didn't have enough character development and time in the first film, so it's always kind of tough to remember that that was his friend when he get into this movie. So, but I mean, I think it, it works well because I mean, it kind of works. I mean, because of you know Chris Evans is great, and like you could sense that like loss and yeah. you know that you know friendship he he's talked about. It's it's very genuine. Um, but yeah, anyway, I, I think the sequence is good. I mean, the boat scene is fantastic. Oh, no, good. Yeah, it's, it's all solid. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this is the part where I, I really got into liking Captain America because the fact that they show you this like crazy like feat that he could do, like to fight and like how he fights with people with super enhanced abilities is really cool. You know, it, it's similar to like um, in Man of Steel where we saw the Kryptonians when we so fans. It's really great. It's like that. Yeah, it is. It's it's, it's 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 the action scenes are so well done in this movie that they're on like another level. Yeah. The captain, so Chris Evans and the stuff people do such a great job. Like that's that set of action scene is is, is outstanding. Yeah, it, it's really spectacular. 
Um, yeah, I mean, kudos to them. This is like junk. That's like- why when you want to do geeky news, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Like when we did Captain America Winter Soldier review, it was took like three hours. When we when we when we talked just talked about when we talked about when we did another show where we we talked about the Winter Captain America Winter Soldier, um, and um, uh, the Captain America like uh, four preview like or something mm-hmm. like that, or whatever the same show or, or like Winter Soldier. In the same pre- like preview, like it's like a double show. It was like a three-hour show or whatever, whatnot. Because there's so much to talk about. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, first, I mean, this movie had a lot of things that has affected the MCU, which we get into. But before we do that, let's do the trailer, and then we'll get back to discussing this movie as all his glory, as uh, Jeff has been bringing up. So let's do it, sir. <sighs> I'll go outside to smoke a joint. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, well, this is a break, so let's do this. Yeah. Um, I'll be right back, folks. Coming up on the drop zone, Cap. You do anything fun Saturday night? Well, all the guys in my barbershop quartet are dead, so... No, not really. You know, if you ask Kristen out from statistics, she'd probably say yes. That's why I don't ask. Too shy or too scared? Too busy! Was he wearing a parachute? No. No, he wasn't. I joined S.H.I.E.L.D. to protect people. Captain. To build a better world? Sometimes means tearing the old one down. And that makes enemies. You ready for the world to see you as you really are? You look out the window. You know how the game works. Disorder, war. All it takes is one step. We're gonna neutralize a lot of threats before they even happen. I thought the punishment usually came after the crime. Shield takes the world as it is, not as we'd like it to be. This isn't freedom. This is fear. open. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Your work has been a gift to mankind. You've shaped the century. And I need you to do it one more time. You're up. It's time. Fantastic. That's what wow. would happen if Cap threw the shield at me. I would just catch it like that. Catch it like that. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, very funny. I, I mean, when he did that, I was like, whoa. Like, I mean, first of all, with this little catching in one hand, it, what with his robotic arm was like, oh my god, never imagined that. So cool. Um, yeah, so you saw the trailer. I mean, I can't believe that's it. One that's, that's one thing that's, that Anthony Mackie will never be able to do. He'll never be able to do all the shit with the shield that, that Chris Evans could do. Oh yeah, yeah, because he didn't. He's not a hands uh, as like Captain America. Yeah, no. that's true. Um, yeah, well, yeah. That's, you know what I'm saying. But you you expect him to know how to use the shield though in Captain America four. Yeah, he I mean, should know how to use the shield by then. Yeah. Oh well, and and if people didn't see what so the the Falcon and show, you know, he did train before in the finale to like know how to use the shield so like i mean okay training. A montage a training montage and whatnot and everything it, like you know it was condensed down to like 30 like 30 seconds but like it was like months yeah <laughs> yeah so months yeah it's crazy uh, and it's been what like two years since the show ended so it's a long time for him to get used that, to it so. that was the, the that was like the two year or three year anniversary the other day yeah i know it was crazy it, 
it premiered in March, remember? Like the yeah, three year anniversary. Yeah, three year anniversary. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. MCU's but Billy Edges, three years. Yeah, oh wow. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, so getting back to the the, the you know, sweet things. Um, so after you know uh, the you know relax thing, we got Nick Fury trying to get access with the flash drive he got from Natasha, uh, but it doesn't work because somehow he authorized it to not be like unbreakable uh, uh, depiction or whatnot. So he has to go and delay Project Insight. That's the whole mission of uh, sending the three helicarriers up in the air to you know prevent a freak crime. So he goes to his old friend, uh, direct uh, Secretary Pierce, uh, that's played by Robert Redford, a uh, big cue to, to get this amazing actor to be part of this movie. Uh, you know, they're friends. They did been part of Shield for, for for a while. If we can get into the information, and you know, after you know that conversation, you know, uh, this is where we get another great action scene with Nick Fury, where he gets ambushed by these police officers. They're they're not there in that area. They're probably you know maybe terrorists undercover or something not. So he gets attacked, and um, which is fa fa fantastic sequence where like his car is equipped with technology lately. Like, you know, it's it's protecting him from bullets, and but you know the capacity is, is getting kind of weakened. And then the moment when they save one percent, he has this gun coming out from the was it the the, 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 the turret? Yeah, the, the turret, right? And then that was a great moment. And then he's trying to escape from these, you know, ambushers. And then this is where we get introduced to the Winter Soldier. The car has, like has 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 like in car driving mode and shit like that right now, where he doesn't have to drive. Yeah, because in the uh, in the ambush, he got he had a fractured arm, uh, you know, in that moment, and uh, so he couldn't really drive properly. Sure, or whatever, whatnot, yeah, yeah, and so right, I mean, incredible that he has a car like that. To, you know, the remote drive, which is great. That's um, Nick yeah. Fury. Of course, Nick Fury would have a car like that. It's Nick Fury. Yeah, certainly, of course. I mean, hey, if we all had that car, would it wouldn't it be Nick Fury? Yeah, I mean that or Stark. Or, this is before oh. Secret Invasion, though. Pussy Secret, pushy, pussy, yeah. ass, pussy ass version of Secret Invasion. Yeah. Doesn't have the, that car no more. Yeah, no, no. I mean, he he was getting too old for this uh, kind of <laughs> uh, Nick Fury. <laughs> He's like, I'm getting too old for this shit. <laughs> I'm not doing this. Um, so yeah, cash so now oh, Samuel Ls is cashing checks. <laughs> exactly. Now he's cashing checks. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I mean, not I mean, this. Film, though. this film, he's handling his business. Yeah, exactly, he's handling his business. So after the Winter Soldier ambushed him, his car is flipped. He has his like mini lightsaber to like duck him down to the sewers and whatnot. And then after that, he meets up with Captain America, talking about how Shield has been compromised. And then you know, it gives him the flash drive after getting shot by the Winter Soldier. And then this is where um you know you brought up um what was it Agent Thirteen uh Sharon uh, Carter yeah Agent Thirteen. Yeah, yeah, and, and so, so uh, they cast her because be, be, for, because of her physicality and, be, and because she looked like the character from the comics. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, and because yeah, of her yeah. work in um, Revenge or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah she was in the Revenge. That was right for this design. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. She was in the show. show uh, there, uh, there. The secondary uh, character in this film. Yeah, um, I, I gotta say, so you like her. I, I like, she, it, she, she adds a love interest to, to Captain America and everything and whatnot. It, that's good for him. It's good for his character. You know, that's true. I know it's weird. I it, it's good you're talking about this. Um, so and plus, it would have been awesome if he would have done a threesome with her with like ninety six year old Peggy. And and Sherry oh, together. Oh my god, no, that's oh my god, that's so weird. Oh my god, please. <laughs> Why you had to do that? That is <laughs> hey, whatever, whatnot. Like, it's, it's perfect. Yeah, maybe in the future, like, he time traveled back to the 40s. Yes, if I, I think he wasn't such a tight ass, he could have hit that. Shit. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I kind of wish they he got together with Black Widow because I, I just 
I don't, don't feel have, anything. They don't have that kind of relationship. That's why they have the writing the way they do with the two of them, where like the dynamic is so buddy buddy, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like and like well, they, and they automatically go to hip her setting up dates for him. They just yeah. don't have that kind of relationship. It's not there, and they want to set yeah. that. Up. Yeah, I I know that, but I, I feel like they're more close could, friends than that. You know what I'm saying? That's true. I I like their relation. I like that they're from. They're, they're by the time you get to end game, they're like best friends. Yeah. I, no, no, no. I understand that. I, I just wish like here's the thing. I like that their relation is platonic. Like I really thought that we got a really good friendship between these two characters. Um yeah, I just I just, for the, for, for, like and was this platonic with her today? Can you believe that shit? I didn't even fuck her. Yeah, exactly. We hung out I, with her or not, and it was totally platonic. Exactly. I, I mean, I'm surprised he I mean, I mean, he, he, he he's his only true love is Peggy Carter. So, like, let's let's be honest here. I mean, my thing with Shen Carter is like she's such a weak love interest. I'm sorry, I I just personally for me, she just doesn't cut it. And then you know you you I mean you know everyone everyone should knows that she's is the niece for uh, uh was it uh, well, Peggy? Yeah. Peggy. Peggy. He doesn't need to really have a love interest because Peggy is his is his ultimate true love. Yeah, exactly, and that's what I say. And the thing that's weird about these two that he just, buys a, lot of, he just buys a lot of lotion. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> lotion. Yeah, right. Um, I I don't know. Like I don't know why the Russo brothers. You know, like I feel like this character is so superfluous. Like I don't think you need this character that had another love interest for Captain America. Like I don't understand that. It it just. It just adds know. a little flavor to the film, and it, and you know, like, and it and it harks back to the comics because in the comics they have a relationship. Yeah, and 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 to be honest, I mean, I it is it's also weird in the comics too. Well, because it is weird because it, I don't really know this. I mean, I'm trying to figure out like they change it in the continuity because she in Sharon she's like a sister to Peggy Carter, and and I think in the initial run in the sixties, and I, I I don't know like. It, they went that way because the, the whole Nitz thing is just kind of weird. Um, I don't know. Personally, for me, I feel like Sharon just doesn't make a lot of sense in these Captain America films. I, I understand she's from the comic books and like she was used during the uh, very, very you know, important. I like the Fury. The Fury uh, chase scene is really good. Um, yeah, it's very good. The lightsaber yeah. thing that he pulls out, whatnot, to to cut himself into the sewer and shit, whatnot, is awesome. It's awesome seeing the Winter Soldier, and um, that's pretty much all I got. Yeah. So then after that, you know, um, we get the chase thing with, with the soldier in uh, Captain America. We saw that in the trailer, which was really cool. Like, after he gets the shield, it's, like, very you know, cool. And then yeah, he gets yeah. into, um, uh, you know, after that scene, we get the, you know, so what, the confirmed death of Nick Fury, which is not true, but we'll get into that later on. Uh, you know, everyone's crying, you know, the, the, the heartbreaking that Nick die and all that. And then Captain America is pulled out of the hospital to meet the you know, secretary Pierce, and you know we get this really great line uh, from the trailer, you know, about the, to make a better world, we need to turn the one, uh, the old one down. A really great line from Robert Redford from that, you know, it kind of explains the the the, the world view, view of the Shield now, you know, compared to the old one uh, in the forties or fifties, why not? Um, and so after Captain America gets that confrontation with Secretary Pierce, he goes into the elevator, and this is where we get the great scene the, of the elevator scene, where the strike team and some random eight-inch shields are like are like coming down to uh, you know Steve Rogers, and like and and why are we seeing this? You know Nick, uh, you know Steve is like looking closely on the behavior of the agents. Like he sees one guard holding his gun, like you know, for no reason uh, to maybe t attack Steve. And then he sees one that's sweating. So, and then, then he sees this, you know, this other one, you know, that lately like, like he notices something's really off right now with these people around him. And then we get this really great battle scene in the elevator scene. And this is where we're gonna stop. So, what do you think about this sequence, uh, Jeff, about the elevator scene? One of the best. Really well, really well choreographed. Really, wait, really well choreographed. That's that's all I got to say. Very well choreographed. Yeah, I, so, I, I doubt Steve, I doubt Chris Evans did very much of that himself. No, I mean, I mean, well, I mean, when you see his face, that's definitely him. But Joe's you know, you see, that's awesome. 
Yeah. You know, I mean, the elevator and shit and whatnot, everything, and like, like, and like lands in the concrete and shit and whatnot, and all that. Like, that's that was fucking intense. Yeah, with the shield. Um, and the suit. Uh, we haven't talked about the new suit. Uh, I like this new suit. I uh, always dug it. Uh, it's very, very sad that we don't see it afterwards in the scene. But uh, I really like the, the stealth suit he wears. It's pretty nice. Yeah. So, uh, like darker tone blue. Yeah. Um, and this, you know, cutting the red out. Like, it's like, yeah, we see is the American flag. And I, I think this is a great way to you know, make it feel cool. So I really dug this suit. It's really nice. Um, so after that, you know, we get this really cool, you know, uh, him escaping from uh, from Shield. You know, he has the Harley um, motorcycle. He's a big Harley motorcycle guy, which is cool. And uh, he attacks the Quinjack with the the Shield, which is neat. Uh, seeing a very impressive feat of him you know, stopping this like thing. And then afterwards, we meet up with um, Natasha, and and Ta Natasha. You know, uh, explains about what the Winter Soldier is. He's a ghost. He's like a, a, a very tough level assassin with, uh, what she say, like a tw uh, 20 uh, uh, kills or whatnot. And, you know, she, you know, Winter Soldier like shot him, uh, shot her through, you know, in the stomach uh, which, while she was protecting this like nuclear en engineer from Iran. Very interesting stuff. And this is where we get really fun. Body cup kind of feel to you know Natasha and um, Steve Rogers, uh, where you know they're in this somewhat Apple kind of store, and you know this is a very funny scene where you know they're pretending to be a married couple, and the guy is like just you know, bugging them, and and they're gonna get married in New Jersey, which is funny because I'm in New Jersey, so it's, it's really cool. But, you know, Marvel is in the Willow world, which is great, um, and and you know it's great. You know, you think that. In an action movie, like they're gonna like have an action scene in the mall, but instead you got Black Widow teaching um Steve how to like be low key and how to like not be recognized, and it's so cool, especially the kiss, uh, which is great. And then after that, you know, it, you know, after that sequence is done, you get in the car. The, the car sequence is really fun. You know, she's asking if she ever he ever kissed back in 1945. You know, and like it's a really great sequence because they you see how their freshman starts to kind of develop, you know, where you know Steve always wants he he's very much a point. Like he wants to know the blue like the gray and black area of life. Like he just wants to know the good bad guys, the good guys and the bad guys, you know, instead of this gray area, you know, uh in life. And then Natasha is very much a liar. Like she like likes to, you know, keep everything close to her chest. And you know, where Steve wants her to be kind of honest, you know, that's his so like, deal with people is just honesty is something he's looking for, you know, instead of just deceit and lies from, you know, like Nick Fury or S.H.I.E.L.D. In, in, in that general. So while in that episode, they were they were trying to look from the, this like, this, you know, this cold, that this AI system that they're trying to pick up and they locate in his uh, old training um area that he was trained before he became a super soldier back in the 40s so they go back to that area in new jersey uh in in my town which is great and uh, he looks around and then he go into this um this uh storage where it's not supposed to be as kent america kind of explains that that the armory should be in a certain like perimeter or something like that and then they look around, they see pictures of Howard Stark and, and Peggy Carter uh, and Tommy, jo Tommy Jones' character from the first Avenger. These are the three founding members of S.H.I.E.L.D. And then they go down to this elevator and they see this big, like, like high, high, um, uh, high wire computers, uh, like in front of the 70s. And then, uh, you know, Natasha activates it. And then we meet this weird, like, the, like, weird character and of course this is uh so uh, uh, so, uh, 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 uh oh, the, oh, oh. So, uh, the the character the hydra scientist that worked with rest gold from the first avenger it comes back in his full comic book accurate like in the, like ai system and we get this huge twist now if you haven't seen the film i adore you guys to First, watch the film before you know the twist. I mean, it's been 10 years, so you should know what, what happened. So the twist is our heroes find out that S.H.I.E.L.D. is actually Hydra, 
Hydra has been uh, been operating since uh, in World War Two, and but they've been infiltrating Shield ever since, and they caused so many accidents and assassinations that, like, you know, caused by them. So first, first off, you know, leading up to Civil War, we discover in this, uh, which I missed the, the first time until you know Civil War came out. I I doubled back into Winter Soldier, and I saw, oh yeah, this is true. They sent the Winter Soldier to kill uh, start the Stark parents, and that's going to be a major thing in Civil War. <clears throat> and then, of course, they're the ones that they're trying to assassinate Nick, and you know they're trying to turf the world apart. And the whole goal for Hydra in this time is they're trying to convert the world to be in their side and and their level, and that's why they're doing the, the shield carriers to to knock out. The potential threats of Hydra, the ones that are going to maybe take down Hydra, just like Captain America did in World War Two. So, Jeff, I know I I, I brush off a huge chunk of uh, like like this middle section. What do you think about the mall scene um, and the twist about the Hydra being in Shield? Go ahead. It's all really well done. Um, it's all really well done. The when they're on the run and all that shit and whatnot, the scenes are really solid and. Um, the bring Zola back like that in the digital form was really cool. It didn't really make a lot of sense to me, but like, you know, that's, that's okay. Um, cap saving, you know, Nat's life and all that shit and whatnot was really dope. Um, and, um, finding out that Hydra is shield and whatnot was a really good plot point for like the MCU at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, first off, it affects age of Ultron. I mean, it affects Captain America's view by a bit like he after this point he doesn't trust the government that's the whole reason he doesn't sign the the, the accords in civil war because of what happened with the, the hydra thing i probably didn't watch winter soldier until after i saw infinity war yeah yeah i mean this and civil war are very important in film war and endgame uh like it, you have to understand that these these movies like these two kind of movies Oh, no, I, I saw it, but I mean, I was probably like half out of it when I saw the movie, like before the Infinity War. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, well, I, was, I, I was more with it when I watched it again. After yeah. Sam, we reviewed it and everything and whatnot, you know, I was more with it, you know? Yeah. That's why, like, when we did, um, we did a show one time on a Friday night that was like, the theme of it was pick your, your best two secondary characters from films, MCU films, that you feel like um, at, haven't been given their proper due or whatever, whatnot, or like, you know, like weren't, weren't given enough, enough praise for their for their contributions. And I picked Black Widow and Falcon for my one or two. My number one pick was the two of them together, tied, right, yeah, yeah. for this movie. Yeah, but I agree. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I no no I agree because especially Black Widow like this movie made me like Black yeah, Widow like part of the film where like they come together and whatnot everything right and they're just so together that they're so good together as a group. Yeah, no I agree. Um, I mean Falcon is really great. I mean he's getting his due now as Captain America, but but Black Widow I totally agree because she's such a great character. I really love her and uh, I mean this is definitely Scarlett Johansson's best performance of the character. Um, in in this film you know and you know minus Endgame I think. Another great performance, but I, I think yeah. this is a great film. Of, this is one of the best. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like they use Black Widow here so great, and it this movie made me convinced that we can have a Black Widow movie, and it's just frustrating. What well, we'll, we'll get into, like I am, I want to do a Black Widow review soon in this trailer, uh, in this channel. Um, you know, from the characters like 60th anniversary this year. Um, I just I feel like it just came so late to do the solo film. It, I mean, because all of us have say we want to see it by Wibbly. It just took so long to even get it. You it's know, not and a conversation for another show. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's just very frustrating. So um so yeah, you know, and the twist, you know, the Hydra twist, let me get into that. I mean, the fact that that twist happened was a huge deal. Like this was Iron Man Tree. Like, remember, this is a year after Iron Man Tree with the Mantra twist. The fact that Marvel was able to hide these two major twists that like shook the whole pro culture thing is like crazy to me, you know. Uh, you know, Trevor, you know, Trevor being the fake Mandarin, and then you get this Hydra twist, which totally affect the 
the MCU in a big way. Like, first of all, let's move on to the things. Like, the Senator from Iron Man 2 being a Hydra engine makes that movie even more, at least, watchable to watch now because of that twist that he wanted the Iron Man technology. Yeah, That's, you don't need him to be a part of it. Well, I mean, oh, I mean, that's your opinion, sir. I mean, look, that's the MCU. They're going to connect everything from this twist. So it was kind of cool that they brought the center and say that he's the high, Hydra engine. Um, so that was really neat that they did that. And, the, and you know, uh, Stiltwell is the Hydra engine. That was really cool that he's, you know, Hydra engine. Uh, <laughs> it was just kind of funny. Um, so, you know, so, you know, after you know, the conversation with Solo, and you know, he, he tricked them, you know, he kind of like like stalled them so that the missiles hit them, tried to kill them, but they, which they didn't. So after, you know, um, Captain America pulls Natasha out of the, the, the what do you call it, the uh, debris, they go to uh, Sam's house, you know, because he's the only person he trusts right now. And, uh, and he knows that he's a soldier. And we get this really cool way of introducing the the wings that he's like a, a was it like an air support rescue uh, person, and he's using this technology that you know was something else. So they had to get that, and then after that they, you know, they find Stitwell and you know talking to the senator who's you know from Iron Man Two. He is basically a high hydra agent, so that was a great way to call back Iron Man Two. Then um, after that, you know, we get our first introduction to the Falcon as the superhero. And, uh, you know, here Stitwell explains the evil plan. I, as I say before, you know, Hydra wants to, you know, target, target out all the potential Hydra threats that will kind of hurt them. So, and we get the drop list of Bruce Banner, Hulk. Uh, this is where we get our first mention of Dr. Strange for the first time before his solo film in phase three. And, uh, so after that, they're in the car and this is where we get the huge, great, um, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, road se uh, action sequence with the Winter Soldier with our true heroes. Um, so this is where we get the proper Winter Soldier play sequence. And he attacks each hero, and uh, which is amazing. Like we see great action scene with the shield, which is amazing. Um, and then afterwards, um, this is where uh, yeah we get to reveal that Bucky is the Winter Soldier, and uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, Captain is the shock, and he's like, "Oh my God, Bucky!" <laughs> and then it's like, "Who's Bucky?" And you know, because we, we don't get to reveal that he's brain, it's been brainwashed by Hydra, and so we get captured by you know the strike team, and then that's where we end the sequence. So we think about the, the height, the 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 um the highway sequence, and and the, the whole like compact between the Winter Soldier and our heroes, uh, Jeff. This was incredible. I mean, grounded, very like. You know, Earlier, when Cap takes down that ship just by himself with his shield, that's really dope. Uh, but like, um, yeah, like the the whole Black Widow fighting the the, the Winter Soldier and whatnot, and everything, mm -hmm. trying to fight him and all that shit and whatnot, him trying to kill her. Um, you know, uh, Cap taking her him on. It's it's great hand to hand combat, great action scenes. Russo Brothers did a great job shooting shooting it and whatnot. It was all really well done. Yeah. And, it, it, it was really awesome that um, it was uh, Maria Hill that frees them and whatnot and all that shit. It was like, yeah. really great for her to pop up. Yeah, it was so great. I like how she said, oh, that thing was squeezing my head. That was a great line for her. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was really great. That was a good way. And then after that, they, you know, uh, meet Nick Fury. Oh, surprise, he's not dead. Um, uh, he's alive. He tricked everyone that he, you know, he used a special, you know, you know, thing that uh, Bruce Banner used to calm himself, so he used that to like stop his pulse, apparently, to like trick them that he died. And so, and and this is where I, you know, uh, you know, we'll be, we'll be bringing up some generation here in the live stream. It's like I think they truly should have died in this movie. I just don't think they <laughs> really know what to do with this character at all after this movie. And I just feel like, well, I you mean, you would want no, because then he wouldn't be an Age of Ultron. He didn't do much in Age of Ultron. He was still cool. there, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know, but I mean, he just oh, he just brings this like convenient. Oh, I got this leftover helicare to you know to conveniently help the Avengers to get these people out of this. You know, it's a cool, it's a cool part of the movie. Okay, okay. I mean, whatever we do, Age of Ultron, I'm like, 
whatever. But yeah, so you know, I just don't think he, he had no purpose. And in and his appearance in the Captain Marvel movies is just like okay. I mean, I like him with Brie Larson, but like they just don't do anything with that. It's just just there, you know. Um, they're like they're trying to do the like you know the the Captain America and Black Widow relationship with Nick and Captain Marvel. They it just doesn't work in a way that like those two work. I don't know why. But, I mean, it's just they, but yeah. Anyway, I, I I wish you know despite I was happy that Fury did survive, but in hindsight. I never understand that I should have realized they didn't have anything else to say about this character after this movie. So it's a shame because he was dope in this film. I mean, come on, the guy is going to have an extra eye that we didn't know he has, and you know, and, 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 and then, and then of course, Captain Marvel had to wreck on his eye being scratched by a cat alien, which is ridiculous. But anyway, so, uh, you know, after that, you know, we got Winter Soldier, meaning uh, Secretary Pierce. Uh, so I haven't discussed that Secretary Pierce is actually a Hydra agent, so he's the main bad guy, like well, really the main bad guy for Nick to face. Um, so yeah, so after everyone is you know settled down, they discuss how to just stop the you know the, the villain plot, the Helicarrier um, launch, and so they discuss that and they're gonna take down Shield completely, and. Uh, after that, you know, uh, Steve is like pondering this moment that he remembers as his time with Bucky in the forties. Uh, you know, very like, like, like you, you remember when we did Twenty Two Jump Street? They have the lobster scene that was not in the first film. It's literally like this. So we get the scene that's not in. It's not even from the first film. It's a new scene for this film. It's, uh, with this line, I'll be there. Was it? What do you say? Like, I'll be there. I will be with you towards the end of the line. And then that's going to be reread again from Steve to, to Bucky now in, in this present day to, you know, to trigger his memories. So it's a big setup for that. So anyway, after that, um, everyone's going to sit up and get ready for the plan. And then we get Captain America go back to the, the Smithsonian and steals the, the Captain America like first Avenger suit from World War II. And then we get a great cameo from Stan Lee himself saying, oh my God, I'm going to get fired. Great cameo. I really dug that. Uh, you know, him being the security guard for the, the Smithsonian, uh, really neat. Um, so then after that, we get into the third act. And um, the third act is amazing. It's full of action packed with the helicarriers. First up, we get um, uh, the, the, the work mass, uh, was it the sick, uh, the work counselor, um, missing shield to seeing the project inside, uh, being launched? And while this, we get Captain America giving a great speech to shield, like confirming that Hydra is shield and like everyone that around you, you cannot be trusted. It's a really great speech and, uh, one that really gives Captain America, like, this is where I, I, like, I, was with Captain America for the first time. Like this is the character at his best. Is that speech he tells about Shield and the whole Hydra thing uh, was really great. And then after that, you know, um, uh, after that, you know, whole blowout happens. You know, everyone is trying to stop the helicopters being launched. And then while this, we, um, how you say, it, um, Cheers gets his strike team there, but the strike team team gets. Uh, neutralized because one of the world councils is actually Black Widow in disguise. We get the first um, appearance of the like hologram mask that's basically mission possible for them, you know, which we will see that technology and, and um, being used by Sharon in the series finale for uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. And uh, we see this again in the Black Widow movie. Um, so, uh, what do you think about this section, Jeff, of like building up to the third act of the helicopters launching in? Um, I really dug it. The, the speech is great by Captain America about, you know, choosing the side you're in, you know, all that. And then the, the reveal of uh, Black Widow being in the, the counselor uh, in that moment. The reveal of Black Widow was really good with the technology and all that stuff and whatnot. It's a good, really good scene for her. And, um, you know, the speech is really, is really cool. It's, it adds a really cool element and whatnot to see, like, the, the infighting between the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents and whatnot and everything after the speech. Yeah. I agree. It's really great, especially when Sharon Carter, like in, in that room, 
wearing uh, crossbones. Yeah, with the and everything and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, really great. And I really dug that sequence. Uh, it's incredible. And yeah, and then, you know, and then after that, um, we get this weird helicopter coming down and we got Nick Fury being badass. Like he has his like traditional like black coat, his eye patch. And then we get this cool reveal of Nick Fury having an eye. He has this like what robotic eye, I guess. Uh, I, I, I don't know. No, it just was his bad eye that 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 it, it never occurred to anybody that his bad eye was useful or whatever whatnot and can be used for the scanner. That's true. Okay, okay. Because I that was always something that kind of like, I was like, is that a robotic eye or like I, I, I didn't that makes sense because I always thought that like he lost an eye like like Owen, you know, like in the first Thor movie, like Owen he, his eye got cut out. Like I right? yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I, I always thought that Maybe that was a robotic guy. Okay, that makes sense. See, because, Jeff. because they did the Captain Marvel movie like later on and whatnot, everything with the Florkin and all that shit and whatnot. Uh, yeah. Oh, the Florkin. Fuck that. That's giving me a nightmare. When I first saw that in theaters with the Captain Marvel thing, Cat scratching Nick Fury, I was like, fuck you. Okay, Winter Soldier is the best movie ever. You know what I think about Captain Marvel? Yeah, and, and you're telling me a cat? He say he didn't. He he did. Once he trusts someone is a cat, and like lost his life because of cat trust. It's like, come on, dude. Nick oh. really good in this film. Yeah. So Nick Fury. This is the last time Nick Fury was badass. Great, dope character development. Like this is the last time you're going to see a great Nick Fury folks. It's the writing. Yeah, it's the writing. I mean, uh, this is great. Um, and one thing I want to bring up is the pacing. Um. It's what they it's, want Fury to be with the writing. It's not his fault. No, no. I, yeah. And I mean, like, just like the comics, like, everyone has their interpretation of this character. I get that there's different people that take these characters from different movies, you know, from the Avengers movies um, and, you know, whatever movie that they pump up. You know, remember yeah, that one of the phase, this is one of the initial phase, the phase one through phase three when the writing was good. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, this is where you know, we we had good writers. I mean, like I, I don't like Josh Williams, but like he was a good writer and he he did a good job of handling the three you know, here and there. Um, yeah. So you know, uh, you know, just wrap up. You know, the third act. You know, uh, this is you know pretty much a great cinematic thing. We get you know. Um, I love Rosita Hill. 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 I love her. I love her whole role as like a supporting character and whatnot to like the final mission. Yeah. Part. Yeah. I, I really dug her. I like she's the woman in the chair. She's like the, the man in the chair. You know, for people like to hear the, the ear comes like, like foods and shit and whatnot and shit when they come up the the you yeah. know the... Yes, I, I love that when she's like, Oh, uh hold that moment and like she pulls her guns and kills them. Oh my god, that was a great moment. They I, kill I, a lot of people in this, like Black Widow kills people with her guns and whatnot and everything. Falcon shoots people. Yeah. Kills yeah. people, right? Like he shoots the shield people and whatnot and kills them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I mean, this one. Yeah, Cap actually throws a knife and sticks a knife into the dude in the in the in the beginning scene. In the beginning scene, yeah. Oh my god, that was like, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of killing. Yeah, I you know, love it. Yeah, people. Yeah, well, hey, they're not pulling their punches, so it's great. I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, I mean, in general, Marvel never pulled their punches. They always, you know, done a good job of killing. Yeah, you know, have these good free, free kills. The, the Russo brothers that didn't hold the hold their cut their punches or whatever whatnot. There was not much killing in like in, in the other movies except for this one. Well, no. You, I mean, this come is on. where you see Falcon killing people. Yeah, I mean that's true. I, I guess it's not pronounced like some other movie. He actually shoots people with his met like with his guns and shit and whatnot and kills them. Yeah. I mean, what about the first Iron Man movie? I mean, too. She shoots dudes and whatnot and everything and kills them in this movie multiple times. That's true. I mean... You don't see it in the other movies. Not, not not every movie. Like, every other movie we do, I do see. I mean... Maybe it's Ultron. Nah, I mean, well, yeah. Well, Ultron, uh, Ultron is different. I mean, you're dealing with robots. That's true. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I see other movies that done that. I mean, like, the Dark Knight trilogy has that, like, a couple times there. It's not pulling their punches there too. Um, it just depends. Like, it, I mean, with Age of Ultron, it's more sci-fi. It, it's more sci-fi. 
like like you know like I, I think I'm thinking more like Daredevil or Jessica Jessica Jones, uh, Luke Cage, Punisher, and uh, so what Spider Man a little bit you know it depends what kind of movie you're watching. I mean this is the most grounded like Marvel Studios film if you think about it right like it's dealing more like terrorism it, despite you know, Hydra being like a science. You know, you know 40s division but it's 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 much more real than some of the other mcu films you get like especially this is the same year with guardians actually you think about it like guardians is the same year when this movie came out um just different months um anyway uh I, you know the, you know uh this is where you know um the helicarriers are like coming up and the plan for the heels is they had to put these microchips into each of the systems so that each of the car the helicarriers up there could shoot themselves to bring them down that's the only way to get these things you know off you know not to be you know functional so they, they take them down they're easy by each charter uh of the weapons in the helicare um they they successfully do that but the third one is hard because the winter soldier is in that one ship and and i say it like he fights with captain america and captain america gets his butt like kicked really hard here you know he gets shot in through the chest yeah and you know, and and then you know when the ship is going down, like he gets really brutally hit by the wood soldier. I mean, his arm is very strong. I mean, it's robotic, and you know, it, 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 it was it, like his right eye gets like really bruised, and he says that line I brought up. You know, uh, I will be to you to the end of the line, and then he it, it somewhat saves his life. You know, falling down to the the water, and that's where we kind of wrapped up the film. Uh, you know, we see each character like Marie Hill joins Stark industry, so he works, she works kind of like directly to Tony Stark uh, in that moment, uh, which we see in Age of Ultron. Uh, and uh, was it Black Widow confronts the was it the, the Nine Nations about what happened with Shield? Uh, great speech, and I really like that. Um, and then we see some of the rest of the senator from Iron Man Two. You know, now that Hydra is, is exposed, um, and then yeah, and then you know. Captain America wants to find Bucky, you know, not that the Wood Sorcerer is kind of the, like, you know, uh, he's, like, he, he's under the grid, as uh, some assassins will say, they will go under the grid to like hide themselves for a while, not to be, you know, uh, get captured by the authorities, right? Uh, and then after this, oh, and then we got the post credit scene, we got two, we got one from uh, Bucky, he's like in the snowy and he's kind of like catching up his like his his life as well um but this is probably the best post credit scene is where we get this random uh hydra two scientists uh strucker uh brennan strucker he's a combo character uh, he's part of the hydra um uh regime in the comic books uh so it was great to see him there he's played by the actor uh jeff i don't know you know this this actor that plays strucker he played the villain in blade 2 and as the vampire he's in the the remake of yeah he's in the remake of the pure jackson's uh king Kong. uh so and what else he was in um uh, he he's in a lot of movies uh let me get his character here uh uh he was in um king Kong, uh cars 2 uh <laughs> So yeah, he's in uh, he's in, in the new Indiana Jones film, The Dial of Destiny. He was Carl Rebber. I, I I haven't seen the new movie. I don't know if you've seen that one. Uh, he was in that as well. Uh, he was in Spectre, uh, Hitman, the Agent Forty Seven movie. He was in there. Uh, I'm looking for some other films that you probably know. But yeah, he he's a very prominent actor. He plays Strucker, and this is where we get the introduction of the twins, the Maximum Twins. This is where we get our our page role and 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 wanda maxima we get to introduce the scar witch and quick server uh, uh we get discovered that the hydra actually have the set the the sector from loki in the avengers and they use experiments on these two uh twins as we, we discover in age ultron and then later on in one division a great sequence to get these two characters to get introduced in before we see age of ultron uh the year before um the year after this movie get released in 2014. Um, and yeah, uh, we think about, um, you know, Captain America with Soldier, the, the third act and the post credit scene with the twins. 
Uh, the post that I've seen with the with the with the twins is is really um, is is a is a big moment in the MCU, and um, sets up Age of Ultron really well. And the the mission to take out the helicarrier helicarrier helicarriers is again just outstanding filmmaking. Yeah, just really well done and whatnot and everything. Right, great ending to the movie and whatnot and everything. Right, and um, you know uh, the the way that they end it with like you know. Um, so you know, Sam saying, "When do we start?" You know, to Sam, wherever what to to Steve, wherever what not is really great. Um, you know, it's uh, I love the Maria Hill component to it, the Black Widow component. Mm -hmm. uh, seeing Nick Fury, Falcon does a great job and doing his part in the, the in the final the final battle. You know, type of scene and whatnot, even taking the hell characters out and watching them hit the water and shit and whatnot and like get destroyed and all that and shoot each other. It looks awesome. Yeah, really, I mean, well, really well done. The CGI, the budget on this was 177 million, and like you can see why. Yeah, I mean, especially with the helicarriers, like it looks really good. Um, yeah, I mean, the special effects has been really awesome. I mean, the robotic arm is like so much CGI and it looks really great. I mean, to this day, it's yeah. really awesome. Um, the Russo brothers tried their best to keep it, um, like less CGI, like practical effects, which you do see here, like there's a lot of practical effects in the film, you know, like stunts and all that. Like they do a really good job with that, uh, which is neat. Um, you know, because- better, but The helicarriers, they had to be done with CGI. Yeah, I mean, I understand that. And, and uh, it's really good. I mean, the CGI has been pretty good in this movie since 10 years, since it's released. Um, rating, let's do this. Uh, what's the rating of this film? Is it still a 10 out of 10? Uh, or? Yeah, 10 out of 10. Okay. I'll give it a 10 out of 10 as well. I think it's one of the best MCU sequels. I mean, this is the Captain America trilogy is the best trilogy of the MCU. Period. I don't care what people say. It I is. don't think I don't I don't think Spider-Man the I don't I, I personally don't think the Spider-Man trilogy is really the best. I just that is very inconsistent. Um I I mean for me that comes close to being the, the best trilogy is the Guardians films. I, I don't know what you think about it, Jeff, but I think the Guardians is like second after. It's the best trilogy, but yeah, it's it's just really the opinion. Like it's up, it's up to you guys. I mean, I I just think the Guardians films are, are definitely fit perfect trilogy after Captain America trilogy. So um, but yeah, uh, Jeff, buddy, um, I want to say thank you, sir, for coming to this Sunday live stream. You did an awesome job here today. Thank um, you. Sir. You were fashionable uh, today, which I like. Uh, I I mean. Uh, this is going to be my favorite live stream because the ex hat was here, so that's great. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you know, I, as always, buddy, I was always happy that you, you always help me get improved with the live streams. Uh, thank goodness the show. No problem, so you're doing better. Yes, thank you. So, as always, folks, um, just to recap, um, don't go yet. We're going to, I want to reveal uh, the stuff we're going to do. So, tomorrow, Monday before, we're going to do X Men 97 episode two review. That's going to be awesome. And then we're going to do our recap slash, you know, finishing up The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. That's going to be awesome. Uh, we have guests, right? Uh, tomorrow with yes. the no guests. No, just no guests. guests. Just the 97? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no guests on anything. Oh, really? No, no guests tomorrow. Okay. No, no. Oh, wow. That's Later cool. on. Later on, later, later on in this mid ninety seven, we'll have more guests. Okay, all right, in the next weeks. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Wednesday we got our Shogun episode seven review. I'm very excited for that. Um, I'm not gonna be uh in Friday movie review, folks. I'm sorry. Um, but it's gonna be uh, what's the movie review you guys are gonna do Friday? City Slickers. C Slickers two. C Slickers. Um, yeah. yeah. So. Please uh, support them. Uh, watch that movie review of City Slickers 2. I'm doing Fallout on Saturday, too. Oh, Fallout and uh, Saturday review? Okay. Um, and yeah, and I will kind of announce this. I will kind of join the Fallout review, folks. Um, I Hopefully, let me see if I'm able to see the Fallout in my TV. If not, I need to just ask Jeff to give me the, the Prime. I'm going to give you the Prime shit so that you can watch it. Yeah, let's just go watch it. Um, I'm going to ask you if yeah. you want to come on and join on Saturday or not. Yeah. Uh, I I mean, thank goodness next week I'm it's off. It's 8 p.m., so. At 9 p.m.? Oh, okay. 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Oh, 8 p.m. Oh, wow. Okay. 8 p.m. Okay. Um, I'll think about it. I'll think about okay. it. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's where we're at right now with this week. Our uh, contact and MC, uh, Bleeding Edge. And for relief, uh, here's the link. Show that. 
So check it out and we, we should be good. Jeff, thank you so much, buddy, uh, oh, for joining bro. me. Thank you. Thank you for joining, uh, converting the trailers. So no problem, sir. Yeah. So thank you, everyone. Have a good night and good night. And.